Hey guys, so this is the first slide I made in this uh, deck I put together for my stock analysis on Splunk. Uh, Splunk is a software company in the tech sector. Its ticker symbol is SPLK. And just to get an idea of the size, it has a market cap of about 23 billion, which is a, it's a mid-sized um, company for being in the tech space. There's definitely a lot of other companies with similar rev revenue that are just priced so expensively right now because growth is just, some of them are just valuated so perfectly right now. As of the close on Tuesday, March 2nd, uh, Splunk is currently priced at about $149 a share. Um, the stock gives no dividend right now because it's in growth mode. It's really trying to expand its top line. Its current price to sales is about 10.6 which is definitely on the cheaper end of growth companies in the uh, tech sector right now. Zoom came out with earnings yesterday, and you know that has a market cap of over $100 billion and a price to sales of about 60 So believe it or not, Splunk actually has about the same revenue as Zoom, but just because of how it's valued um, as a multiple of its sales, uh, Splunk is at a much, much cheaper uh, price right now. Splunk comes out with earnings tomorrow uh, after the market closes. I've owned Splunk for a while, and Splunk is definitely a volatile stock, especially when it comes to its earnings. So I'm looking forward to its earnings to see what it releases, what kind of numbers it comes out with. Um, all right, let's go to the charts. Okay, so here is the daily chart for Splunk. Uh, this stock has been a very bumpy ride. I mean, recently it went from 108 to 220, essentially doubling. It looked like it was forming a, a bullish flag type pattern, um, but you know, on its last earnings report, basically after hours it dropped 20, I think this was like a 20% drop, a 23% drop, and then it was consolidating below these moving averages, which is you know bearish in the technical world, and it completed that pattern down to around this 150 area. It does look like there are some good levels of support around 130. You have this gap here, and I believe if you look at the weekly chart, you have a pretty big breakup candle here um, with its uh, open basically around 130 as well. So it is going to find some good support there and, and possibly maybe find a bounce if it doesn't uh, earlier. But definitely looking at Splunk on the, the short medium term, it, it's definitely in a downtrend. However, if you look at the stock from a longer point of view, it's it's in an uptrend. It's not very pretty, but it is in an uptrend. It went through this basically from 2014 to 2018, this uh, four or five year period of consolidation before it ended up breaking out. And it has been a wild ride. And so it's really been tough for both investors and traders alike to stay in the stock and to make money because it just has been so volatile on the up and down side. Um, this doesn't really bother me because I am a long-term investor and I do really like Splunk's business strategy and its outlook in the future. So for me, I think this just poses a good opportunity to basically load up on a stock that I, I really do like. Um, I have started adding to my position over this last week and last month as well even though it is still in a short midterm bearish looking view here. Um, really, uh, I guess just my investment philosophy is it's really not my position to predict what's going to happen tomorrow or next week in the stock market, but it's really my, uh, I'm just here to react to the opportunities that the market presents to me. Splunk is a company that I, I really like at these levels. And as long as it's below kind of like this 160 and I see there's a lot of fear and panic in the stock, I'm really happy to start adding uh, more of Splunk to my portfolio to hold. I think this is a good synopsis of the uh, where the company is at in terms of price action. Uh, definitely short midterm bearish, but it does look like there's a good chance it's going to find some sort of bounce between 140 and 110 to find that higher low before resuming its uptrend and going on higher. Okay, so now let's actually look into what does Splunk actually do? When you're buying Splunk, what type of company are you buying? So Splunk is an innovative software solutions company that ingests data from different sources, including systems, devices, and interactions, 
and turns that data into meaningful business insights across the organization. Data to Everything platform, which is basically their flagship product, uh, it includes uh, Splunk Enterprise. So that platform enables users to investigate, monitor, analyze, and act on data regardless of format or source. In the last sentence that I pulled, data is produced by nearly every software application and electronic device across an organization and contains a real-time record of various activities such as business transactions, customer and user behavior, and security threats. So looking at this, Splunk is really focused on turning data into something that the company can actually act on. I think this puts Splunk in a very good position going forward because our interaction with technology and software is always increasing going forward. And that just means that there's going to be more data to log from all these different interactions that we have, whether it be with our phone, on a website buying a product, um, wearable technology that we're now using, uh, especially now that we're starting to transition to the Internet of Things, all these interactions with these different devices are going to be recording data that the company is going to want to extract useful information out of so that it can improve going forward. On top of that, what I think gives Splunk a unique competitive advantage is that it is on the edge of machine learning because it, the, its software is able to take in all this data that is formatted differently and from different sources and contains different information, yet it's able to organize it in a way where companies are able to sift through it very, very quickly, so quickly that they're able to make real-time decisions off this data that it is able to analyze and monitor. This all sounds great and can be a bit confusing, so I put in an example where uh, or a use case, so it's, it's easier to understand basically the usefulness of the Splunk software. All right, <laughs> so all this complicated talk about tech and the use case that I decided to put in this presentation is about Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza is a great example for the usefulness of the Splunk technology because although it's a pizza company, it's a company that's invested heavily into technology. It's basically created, you know, the best and most efficient e-commerce website in the pizza space. And as a result, over 50% of the orders that Domino's receives are coming from online. So they have a great amount of potential to analyze user behavior. One really cool example of this is during the Super Bowl. You know, every single minute during the Super Bowl for any pizza company is incredibly important because they are doing an, a really high amount of revenue per minute. And with Splunk, basically, they're able to analyze the orders per minute by region. They're able to look at the effectiveness of the coupons that they set up for each specific demographic or, or region, and they're able to basically react. If they're underperforming in a certain region or a demographic or there's some target that they're not hitting, they're able to immediately try to um, correct, you know, or, or, or try something different. And that, that's just such a big competitive advantage for you know an event like the Super Bowl, that it's no it's no wonder that Domino's is basically the king of the pizza space, and they continue to drive you know innovation through its collection of data and its its analysis. And I think this uh, focus on utilizing data is going to be more important in almost every industry that I can think of, you know, from insurance, banking, industrials, especially tech. Healthcare, you know, I, I just think this is going to have, uh, this is something that can reach a lot of different uh, companies and businesses, and a lot of people can find usefulness from it. All right, so this next slide is looking at Splunk's top line and its net income. In Splunk's uh, fiscal year 2016, they grew 48% year over year with $668 million in revenue. And in their fiscal year 2020, Splunk grew 31% year over year with 2.3 three billion dollars in revenue. Um, just as also a side note, Splunk's fiscal year, uh, their fiscal year 2021 is ending tomorrow. So basically they started seeing the effects of or the impacts of COVID in their fiscal year 2020. So this was really the main dip for their for their revenue growth year over year. Splunk is a company that is not operating on a profit yet. And that's okay, because the company is really, they're, they're after growth. They're after growing the top line. 
They have very good gross margins because they are a software company and their you know, cost of fulfilling that service is, is pretty cheap. So most of their expenses is coming from, you know, the back end, you know, admin and marketing and selling. And they're trying to put as many, you know, dollars that they can into that so they can continue to grow their top line. But Splunk is a company that it will have good margins. Uh, I believe they've mentioned that they think they can get net margins of 20% once they get to size and if not better. Now, not all tech companies have seen an impact from COVID. But Splunk is a software company that has, and you know, that becomes more apparent as to why uh, Splunk was specifically hurt on the next slide when we look at its different revenue streams. But I think this chart does a good job showing basically why there's so much fear in the stock right now. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's a growth company that's, you know, supposed to be focusing on growing its top line, and it didn't do that last year. And so investors are nervous, so it's our job to analyze basically, you know, is this is this permanent or does this company have a chance to turn it around and is the market discounting uh, too much that it, it's not going to be able to get back on track? All right, so this is a slide that shows basically Splunk's um, last quarter and their last couple years revenue broken down by segment. So Splunk has three segments that it, that it reports on for its revenue, and that is license, cloud services, and maintenance services. Now the reason that Splunk has been hurt so much by COVID is that all the revenue that it records under the license segment, that, that is all, it, although it's software, it's all done on premises at the physical locations of the companies of whoever is buying it. So when somebody is purchasing their software, they're actually purchasing a license to use their software where it's installed on premises. The Splunk management team has been communicating that they've been trying to transition from license deals to cloud service subscription deals for a while now, but COVID really has just expedited this transition and it's done it in a way where it's, it's, it's affected its license deals enough to where it's no longer growing year over year. So this is what investors are, you know, worried about. But this overall, this transition to the cloud services is uh, the really, it's, it's, it's the right move for the management team. There are a couple of key advantages from this transition. And the first one that comes to my mind is basically is it helps standardize the process of onboarding people on to, to use the Splunk software. Uh, they no longer have to look into you know, each individual company's location, their hardware setup, you know, it, it, it's much easier to coordinate with a third party cloud provider like Google, um, Microsoft Azure or AWS, because they have all sorts of flexibility to meet the company's needs. And secondly, the company no longer now has to invest in the physical hardware or, you know, a, a much smaller team because they don't have to host the software on site. Um, they don't have to be worried about updating it on their site, and it helps. I'm sure it makes it easier for Splunk to troubleshoot, you know, when something goes wrong because it, it everything is going to be more standardized and not everything is going to be so unique to the company. And finally, maybe the most important reason is that cloud has better margins than the license deals. So in the future, I think Splunk is going to... Uh, is going to enjoy better net margins on the bottom line for making this transition now, even though it seems painful. So now let's look at this chart. In Splunk's fiscal year 2019, license was over 50% of uh, Splunk's total revenue. And now in the fiscal year 2020, it's less than, uh, it's almost about a third, a little more than a third. So, I mean, that's quite a, a shift there. It's it's down. Oh, here we go. It's down 34% year over year, comparing 2020 to 2019 year to date. If we look at the cloud services, cloud grew about 80%, comparing the same quarter this year to the same quarter last year in 2019. And on a year to date, it grew also 80%. It's really making this transition quick to cloud, and the cloud segment is growing really, really fast. Um, the maintenance services is staying pretty on par, 
Um, basically, the, that's revenue collected from actually onboarding people on Splunk and providing troubleshooting and and customer support and all that kind of kind of revenue. But all in all, I think this transition to cloud is the correct decision by the Splunk management team, even though on paper it, it looks like the company is not doing well. I think its growth prospects in the future are still very, very good, and that a lot of people are sandbagging their potential going forward. I took this slide from the supplemental slides that Splunk provided in its last quarterly report. Uh, this is one of my favorite metrics that they report on every quarter. Um, I remember when I first saw this, I had to do a double take because, you know, it says it's a retention ratio, but I'm looking at it and I'm like, how is this over 100% and it's a retention ratio? But if you actually read about how they calculate it, basically what they're doing is they're they're looking at a group of customers at at the beginning of a period or at the beginning of the year, and they're looking at, okay, of that same set of customers, what is now the revenue we're collecting from that same set of customers at the end of the at the end of 12 months and they are consistently around 130 percent retention rate and this also includes so say they had 100 customers and they lose two you know those 98 customers now are now basically have increased the uh revenue from the beginning 100 to 130 percent so this is including churn and all the other normal uh you know calculations that you would see in a retention ratio so this is the best measure of Splunk's cloud growth. If it didn't bring on any new customers, it would still be growing over 30% year over year, which is very, very impressive. And I, it, it shows the, uh, the value that the, Splunk, uh, that the Splunk software can provide. This is the final page of the uh, presentation I put together, just to be transparent. Um, this is my position in Splunk and in comparison to my my whole portfolio and it's also a good reminder that you know it, all the opinions expressed in this video are just that they're just opinions and they're just for to be used for educational purposes only it's not a recommendation to go out and buy but basically i started investing in splunk in in 2018 when they were under 120 dollars a share and so i did purchase a little bit a month ago when after splunk dropped after uh its previous quarter's earnings, it dropped over 20%. And so I got in a little bit there at a cost basis of $170. I, I only bought $850 though. And then a couple days ago, I was able to buy some Splunk at a dollar or $144. So I have been starting to make some purchases of Splunk because I do like the price that it's at. And I do think from my perspective that it, it's gonna be a very good growth company for you know the long term. And to me, the risk reward is, is totally worth it. So ho hopefully it stays down at these prices a while. So I'll have time to accumulate more in my uh, portfolio. But, uh, you know, this is a company that I'm excited about. And I'm glad I can make this video and share with you guys. If you're still around, please leave me feedback. Uh, subscribe. Give me a like. Um, please put comments on just what your opinion is and, and what I can improve. Alright, so this is Mark and Matt, and everybody have good luck investing.